Hi all. In today's video, we discuss another important aspect of trading, trade management. Continuing from the previous video where we explored factors I consider when entering trades, the next step is even more crucial. Your overall success depends on how you handle situations that arise after entering a trade, whether it's managing losses or exercising patience to maximizing gains from a winning trade. First, let's understand what many traders get wrong. Trade management is more about psychology and less about rules and frameworks. Before entering a trade, when you don't have a position, you're merely a spectator, and market volatility feels more like entertainment than serious business. There are times when market movements can still affect you psychologically and lead to emotionally charged trades. However, this can be minimized or even eliminated by following a process and instilling discipline. Once you've committed capital though, everything changes. The up and down ticks suddenly have a stronger psychological impact, which may lead you to either act hastily by exiting a trade too early or delay too long, resulting in a larger than expected loss. Now let's dive into the details of trade management. First things first, we need some basic rules in place to handle losing trades because your entire trading strategy hinges on it. The goal is to ensure that your losing trades eat away as little as possible from the profits of your winning trades, which is why it's crucial to become comfortable with taking small losses. This is reflected in the risk to reward element of a strategy's performance. For example, in my longer term trading results, my losing trades on average result in a loss of just under 7% of the position, while my winning trades average a return of over 24%, resulting in a risk to reward ratio of nearly 1 to 4. The first part of the equation is managing losses. As I strongly recommend on my channel and to the members of our group, the stop loss should be predetermined before entering any trade. As part of trade management and risk control, you should close the trade as soon as the stop loss condition is met, without deviation. There are times when traders experience frequent losses, and this can be disheartening, especially for new traders who aren't used to such situations and may be overexposed. Although these losses can speed up the learning process, it's important to remember that the losses should remain small. If you're experiencing a higher frequency of stop losses, i.e. a low win rate, it's essential to check a few things. Is your stop loss too tight? A stop should allow for some volatility. Is your trade entry mistimed? Was it too early or too late in relation to the structure you identified? Is the market hostile? Remember the saying, a rising tide lifts all boats, and the reverse is also true, a sinking tide lowers all boats. In such situations, reducing your position size or trade volume may be the best course of action. During tough times, it's better to return to the drawing board rather than fight the market and try to make it all back in the next trade, which only increases the chance of failure. The simplest thing you can do during these periods is to trade lighter and continue learning until your trading gets back on track. Returning to the topic of stop trades, I exit my trades as soon as the stop is hit, which I recommend to everyone. However, you can improvise by choosing to close the trade if the price closes the day or week beyond your stop loss. Alternatively, you can have staggered stop losses to give the trade more time to perform. No matter the approach, the key is to execute your plan with discipline and avoid falling into the hope trap. The issue with deviating from your trade plan is multifold. It usually indicates a lack of discipline and more importantly, it disrupts consistency. Once you lose consistency, any future predictability is lost. I often refer to my equity curve to demonstrate this. You'll notice that I've had periods of lackluster performance. During those times, it would have been easy to break the rules, thinking something was wrong. However, once you truly understand your strategy and its past performance, it becomes easier to stay disciplined knowing that consistency will provide predictability and confidence in the long run. Now let's move on to managing profitable trades. Every profitable trade unfolds differently. Some generate immediate returns, 
others hover between the entry point and stop loss before taking off, and some steadily move into profit. How you respond to these scenarios is critical, and we'll address that shortly. But first, let's look at another common dilemma traders face. Once your capital is fully committed, you'll likely continue your daily and weekly scans for new opportunities. Sometimes these new prospects may outperform the positions you're holding, leading to emotional reactions. In these moments, it's important to accept the missed opportunities and remain disciplined. Let your trades run their full course, whether they hit your target profit, stop loss, or reach a time stop if applicable. When managing a profitable trade, your course of action will depend on your objective. For example, if you aim for a 3 to 1 reward to risk ratio, you can exit your full position once that ratio is achieved. Alternatively, if you want to extract more profit, you can sell part of the position when the target ratio is reached and trail the balance using an indicator, price action, or a mix of both. If you're a more patient trader like me and prefer to maximize the potential of a full position, you might give the trade more room to move, especially if the company's fundamentals remain strong. However, the downside is that you may have to sacrifice some profits if the price doesn't continue to rise as hoped. Like all strategies, this approach has its pros and cons. Through extensive research, I've developed a strategy that helps me stay in trades during consolidations. By combining indicators with price action, I adjust my stop levels as the price evolves. This method also helps me to distinguish between normal consolidations and those too weak to justify continued patience. Specifically, I rely on the crossing of the MACD indicator to guide my decisions. For example, in a trade with interparfums after entering at the breakout from a lateral consolidation, the stock rallied $20 in 8 weeks, equivalent to 2x the risk we took on the trade as our initial stop loss was set at $10 within the consolidation. During this time, the stock dipped nearly 10% in another consolidation. Many traders might have exited at this point, seeing their 16% profit disappear in a week. However, this was only a temporary pause, as the stock resumed its rally with similar consolidations along the way. Our trade management approach didn't flag the consolidation as a concern. However, a later consolidation did trigger an alert. At that point, the MACD crossed below the signal line on the weekly chart, indicating weakening momentum. In response, we raised the stop loss just below the wick of the closing candle. This resulted in an exit shortly after, and the stock has since failed to advance. Our strategy saved us from being stuck by triggering an exit early in the consolidation. While staying in the trade wouldn't have caused a financial loss, the opportunity cost was significant as other opportunities passed by. Although we missed part of the move after the high, I consider it a necessary sacrifice to capture as much profit as momentum allows before it fades. The other crucial aspect of trade management is navigating the psychological challenges. With money at stake and external pressures, it becomes difficult to stay disciplined. You might panic sell during a small dip, or fear missing out during a price surge. Worse, you could over-leverage at the wrong time, amplifying losses. The first step to correcting course is to treat trading like a business and be patient as that business grows. The second step is to establish and consistently follow a set of rules. My approach is based on these rules, ensuring that I remain in control of every trade, regardless of market movements. This prevents emotionally driven decisions that could undermine a trade's success. For those interested in following my trades, using my scanner, or joining our fantastic community of like-minded traders, use the links below.